Which is harder, physics or chemistry? I wouldn't say that physics is necessarily any harder than chemistry, it's just that by virtue of the way that it's taught, physics is harder. There are two basic styles of teaching science-related subjects, pyramid-style teaching, and pillar or stovepipe-style teaching. In the pyramidal learning paradigm, you start out by teaching your students very simple tasks, and there are a lot of them, so the repetition helps the learning process through memorization. As the problems become more and more complex, they shrink in number so that by the time you reach the top plateau of the problem difficulty, the number is very small, but the amount of operations contained within each problem is quite large. Some common examples of this paradigm of learning are languages, mathematics, and notably chemistry. Then there is the pillar or stovepipe learning paradigm, where the concepts to solve the problems are demonstrated, and then expected to be applied to problems of ever-increasing difficulty. This is a much more difficult and advanced style of learning as it relies on quick memorization and mastery of the concepts. The most notable example of this style of learning is physics, but a lot of engineering classes are also taught according to this paradigm. Some people excel at pyramid learning, others excel at pillar learning, but rarely do you excel at both. Most people learn better through repetitious tasks, which is why chemistry is considered to be easier than physics. But conceptually, they're about the same, until you get up to general relativity, special relativity, and quantum mechanics, then it gets harder. There are a number of useful mathematical concepts used in physics, such as vector dot and cross products, as well as multivariable calculus and linear algebra which are essential for quantum mechanics if you are to learn the Heisenberg matrix paradigm, Schrodinger wave equations paradigm, and Dirac vector arrow paradigm of electrons. A good amount of chemistry can be learned without using calculus, but physics dives into the calculus waiting pool rather quickly. This also contributes to the difficulty level, but physics can be leveraged by first learning these concepts in math classes single and multivariable calculus, differential equations, and linear algebra, then when you see them in physics classes, you're already very familiar with them. If the instructors would use a much more repetitious problem-solving approach to physics, I feel it could be made much easier for those students who don't learn through the stovepipe approach which is what is commonly taught in academia. The introductory laboratories in physics are easier aside from the mathematics because they usually don't involve handling fluids. Physics laboratories involve solid-state mechanics, optics and electronics. However, to perform many physics experiments you have to understand the mathematical concept of vector. Whether you find the theory easy depends on the person. The theory of physics and chemistry overlap. I am going to explain these things in terms of Piaget's cognitive theory of development. He was a child psychologist who studied how children learn scientific concepts. I myself am not a psychologist, but I found his theories in both teaching and learning science. I found his model useful in understanding some of my own cognitive difficulties. Most people would find introductory chemistry easier than introductory physics because chemistry uses concrete concepts rather than abstract concepts. Concrete topics are learned before abstract concepts. A large fraction of the intelligent population never learn concrete concepts. Thanks to Piaget, I can be more specific. I will talk from what I perceive as the point of view for an adolescent taking an introductory science course. Concrete concepts include conservation laws of all types. Conservation of matter is surprisingly easy to teach to children. Conservation of mass is also easy to teach before adolescence. Conservation of energy is slightly harder than conservation of mass but not too hard for an adolescent. Concrete concepts also ordinal concepts. The concepts of more, less and equal are concrete. Weight as a measure of mass is concrete. Abstract concepts include the concept of direction in the vector sense. Although three-dimensional momentum is conserved, understanding it full requires knowledge of its direction. Weight as a gravitational force is abstract. Distance, time and vector direction are abstract concepts. Energy, mass, and electric charge are concrete concepts. Point of view, is an abstract concept. Symmetry as invariance is an abstract concept. Symmetry as a pattern is a concrete concept. Determinism is a concrete topic. 
probability is an abstract concept. Formal logic is an abstract concept. So the concept of logical contradiction is also abstract. People who have acquired concrete concepts can often live with a contradiction in a technique as long as a technique works for their specific application. People who have achieved abstract concepts and concrete concepts are bothered by logical contradiction in a technique even if the contradiction doesn't impact their particular application. People who are strong in abstract skills may be uncomfortable with exceptions to the rule. People who never develop abstract skills, but are strong in concrete skills, may have no trouble with exceptions to the rule. Concrete people, which include most children, simply memorize the exceptions to a rule. A person with abstract skills will try to find a bigger rule that does not include any exceptions. Chemistry and biology are full of exceptions to the rule. Physics laws tends to have fewer exceptions than chemistry rules. Abstract often means extremely general. Concrete often means extremely specific. So an abstract concept can be used in a wide range of applications. Concrete often means extremely specific. Situational awareness is concrete. Long-term planning is abstract. Tactics are concrete. Strategy is abstract. Chemistry involves a lot of conservation laws. Chemical analysis is usually done for only one point of view. Chemistry requires the recognition of symmetrical patterns. Chemical analysis often does not include invariance. Chemistry involves ordering substances. Physics involves representing different points of view. The specific meaning of words is usually abstract. The general meaning is generally concrete. Introductory chemistry, both organic and inorganic, largely uses conservation laws. Introductory physics uses the concept of direction in two and three dimensions. Direction is what vectors are all about. Chemists don't have to know about vectors right away. That depends on the branch of chemistry, physics and the person. Introductory chemistry is less mathematical than introductory physics and for this reason many people will find introductory chemistry to be easier. However, for people that are good at math, physics can seem more straightforward and logical than, say, organic chemistry which revolves around reaction mechanisms that often can't be, at least not in the scope of the course, logically derived from first principles but rather take the form of this as what is observed to happen and this is how we propose that it happens. When I majored in chemistry, I followed the physical chemistry concentration which means that I took more physics and physical chemistry courses, and less organic chemistry, than a typical chemistry major, so I have a fair background in both areas. Overall, I found chemistry to be the easier of the two. The most difficult part about physics was mastering the equations which required a lot of practice while the most difficult part about chemistry, if you don't include branches that overlap with physics such as quantum mechanics and thermodynamics, was memorization which required less effort than equation mastery. Of course, chemistry majors also had to take upper division chemistry labs which are pretty intense courses. Additionally, after acquiring a fairly strong math background, physics became much easier and I breezed through mathematical methods and classical mechanics.